let's turn our attention to absolute value inequalities. Remember that absolute value is distance from zero. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking for numbers whose distance from zero is less than or equal to 12. We're trying to restrict the distance, right? We want those that are basically, had a, you can reward this to say, we want the distance to be within 12 right. units, right? Wouldn't it be anything less than 12 or greater than negative 12? Exactly. See, intuitively, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. We want to see how we can write that using the properties that we saw a few videos ago. So when you, when you look at this, if you look at this on a number line, here's zero. I want anything that is within 12 units this way and 12 units this way. So that means between 12 and negative 12, these values right here are the ones that make sense, right? Would you be able to include negative 12 and 12? Are they less than 12 or equal to 12 units away? Mm -hmm. Yes, those guys are equal to. So just by looking at this, you would probably say that my interval notation is what? Negative 12 is less than or equal to x. But interval notation. Oh, bracket negative 12. Bracket negative 12 to 12. Bracket. Now, I've got a little special word for this guy. When you have this type of absolute value inequality, I think of this as the mother hen. You, are you familiar with that expression? Or am I the only one who does? Because I grew up in Tennessee. I come from the, from the country. And that's what we do. We understand about chickens. The mother hen wants to make sure that her brood her chicks, her peeps, <laughs> stay within so many units of her, right? And you see this if you go to the mall. Like when you see kids on leashes, it's the same thing. When you put a kid on a leash, you can keep them. Thank you. Yeah. You know what? Before I had kids, I went, oh my word, how could you do that? Once I had kids, I'm like, I need that now. When you when you have kids that are crazy, my sister's kids. then you feel like you need some kind of restraint. Even when they're not really crazy, it's still good to know where they are sometimes. Yes. It's good for me. Just oh watch yes. The thing I don't like is a lot of kids are so smart and they buckle oh yeah, they're fine. I'm like. <laughs> Well, let's, well, let's look at this, let's look at this inequality since we have gotten a little bit derailed. <laughs> let's look at this inequality from the properties that we have. The inequality should be rewritten as x is less than or equal to 12, and what Kelly was saying earlier, greater than or equal to negative 12. Notice how x is between these guys, right? And please also note that this inequality makes sense. Is negative 12 less than 12? The inequalities are going in the right direction. They're all flowing in the same direction. So this guy makes sense. So this is what the inequality looks like when it's solved. This is the graph, and this is the interval notation. So let me give you another example, something that's not so simple. Well, get x by itself. Done. See? I got your back. It, de it, dep it depends on what they're asking you for. If they say solve this, this is solved. If they say graph, there's the graph. If they say express, which is what I'm going to say, <coughs> express using interval notation, then you got to say that. So on, on my exam, you would solve it like this. And then you would express your answer using interval notation. <coughs> Whether or not you graph it is up to you. Some students like to have that, like that visual representation, because it's easier to go from that visual to the interval notation. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Let's try this guy. The absolute value of 2x minus 9 is less than 11. 
Remember, in all of these guys, you still need to make sure that you isolate your absolute value if it is not already by itself. Now, this absolute value is by itself. Since this says less than, that corresponds to the mother hen. Okay? That means you're wanting values to be within so many units on one side or the other, right? And the way that we write this is we take the stuff that's on the inside here, 2x minus 9, we want this to be less than 11. But what else do we want it to be? We don't want it to be less than negative 11, we want it to be greater than negative 11. That's the tricky thing about inequalities. You see the symbol as less than when you read from left to right. If I'm going backwards, 2x minus 9 is bigger than or greater than negative 11. Look at your inequality symbols. Do the inequality symbols flow correctly? Are they all going the same direction in the string? Yeah. Yes. Is negative 11 less than 11? Yes. Okay, then we're all right here. Get x by itself. We saw videos about this yesterday. Go for it. Maybe I'm the only one who saw a video since I made them twice yesterday. Can we solve it for x? Yes. <coughs> solve. <coughs> what would you do here? Add 9. Just add 9, so and that's good? To all sides. To all pieces, right? Mm -hmm. So now I have what? Negative 2 is less than 2x, which is less than 20. Now I'll finish this. What do you do? Divide by 2. All sides. Divide all parts by 2. So my inequality is? Negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 10. So you flip the signs? No. Do I flip the signs? That's a good question. What was I dividing by? Since I was only dividing by a positive 2, the inequality symbol does not change. It only changes when you divide by or multiply with a negative? Multiply or divide by a negative, not with a negative. See, this is a negative, but what I'm dividing by is a positive 2. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I didn't know that. OK. Well, now you do, and knowing is half the battle. Is it always going to be the, the, the way the problem was originally given to you? Right. It's less than 11. Correct. When you get to the bottom, is a, a, a way to double check that is your spread literally from negative 1 to 10 is 11. No, that was a coincidence. That's a pure coincidence. That was a coincidence, yes. Okay. This number does not mean that's how far apart these numbers are going to be. Okay. Because what if I made this, um, if this number in here had been 19? It, it would not have been 11. Okay. At least I don't, 17. No, it would not be 11. Anyway, so if, I, if I've got this, what's the interval of notation, or do you want to see the graph first? Do you want to see the graph? Let's do the graph. Everybody loves the graph. So the only way to check, check it was, would be to randomly use, say, negative 2, 0, and 11 to plug it in yeah. and see how it... Yeah, you, you, you can check, okay. check the numbers that are within the interval or outside of it against this. If you're just checking it by hand, but of course we have the graph and calculator, no, and, so we, and so we'd be able to see on the graph and calculator where those intervals are. But doing that same chart that we were doing before mm -hmm. from each group. Well, yeah, yeah okay. but, but we don't really need to do a chart or do a lot of testing because it tells you exactly where it is. We don't have to test the intervals, right? On the quadratic and rational inequalities, we had to test the intervals. Here, though, it tells you exactly what it is. That's the, the difference. Does that answer your question? I mean, you, you can plug in values to make sure that your answer is right, but we don't need to do that to see what the answer is. Okay. So what kind of circles do I have here? Open. Both going to be open. And what's my interval notation from this guy? Parentheses negative 1, 10. Parentheses negative 1 to 10. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. So I told you this would be better than the rational inequalities, right? Now you believe me.